Uh, so today, we don't want to be long, but we want to talk about, actually it's kind of bragging again, about a revolutionary concept. Uh, it'll, it'll be talking a little bit about our community, Asaba Kun. Uh, it's a little bit about its mission, a little bit about its vision. And so, uh, and also it's an advertisement. Because see, all of our CDs now, in fact all the recent CDs and DVDs will be available downstairs. Uh, next week we got a little busy and we had them all put on uh, DVD. So all of the recent ones will be on CD and DVD. And that's why we do these uh, videos. It is part of our uh, vision for the future. Our vision for the future is, first of all, that we want to be uh, we want to be involved in a world class organization. Okay? Now we are an organization. Now your vision, you will become. Or organizational vision is like this, or mission is that you have a picture of an optimum future of your organization. And then you, you solidify that vision in your mind and then you begin to work toward that vision. In other words, everything is from Allah, but you are self-creating or self-developing your picture, your vision of your organization. It's like if you was going to be a fighter, right? Why visualize yourself as I want to make it to number 10 in the rankings? I want to at least make the rankings to number 10. Right? This is my goal. This is my vision. So what will I become? I will become hamburger meat. The people that they got to get through me to get toward the championship. And as I get old and move out of the fighting arena, I will have scar tissue, disfigured noses, and everything else because I had desired, I had drew for myself a picture. I had limited my vision by saying to myself, in fashioning and forming in my mind a picture of myself as number 10 in the rankings. This is what I want. This is my goal. I want to reach number 10. Well, you know, down in that arena, you have a lot of mediocre fighters that are beat you to death, right? They're not number one, number two, number three, or nothing like that. But they have enough skill to beat you to death. And you don't have enough skill to slip punches and get out of the way, right? So you wind up a brutalized person. In life, why should we draw a picture of ourselves as number five, ten, or just making the rankings, right? I'm saying as a group, as an organization. We don't know what our limit is. A lot of them told us what our limit is. So why not say we want to be a world-class organization, right? We want our Sabakun to be an agent of change, right? When we look out at the world, we see a certain thing. We see many things that we would like to change and develop and be involved in. We would like to change the whole world to this utopia, heaven on earth. It's possible, not the way things are. It is possible. But the human being have not reached that level spiritually. Physically, psychologically, it is still operating on nafs. So although we want to help develop this beautiful world, we have two realities. Our areas of concern, our areas of concern as Muslims is the whole Muslim world and the whole globe. It's not just black people, white people, Muslims here, but no, no, no. Our area of concern is the whole world. We're concerned about all of the world being a perfect place. But then there's a, our area of influence. 
You know, what we can really do. Now, this is what we're working on here. Our, we have a beautiful picture of the world that we want to be, but we got to chop it down into our area of influence. What we can do. So, it starts off with us as master, school, business, living close together, right? That's our area of influence. And the bigger we get in that, the more influence we develop, right? So we have a certain amount of massage now. We have a certain amount of influence. But when we gain 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 massage in every city in America, educating people in each center, right? Helping and aiding people in each area, our area of influence increases. Do you see what we're trying to say? Right now, we have, and our area of influence is bigger than it was 30 years ago when we got started. It's bigger than it was 20 years ago. But, that's something that we got to remember, is that we're not as big as we can get. Not for importance, but our area of influence. We want to change and aid the whole world. But if you jump up from, and try to do that all at one time, you'll be frustrated and you'll commit suicide. One thing about it, you won't get much done. So we're in a, 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 a movement that we believe that is global in its concept, like the environmentalists say, Think globally, but act locally. The environmentalists, they want the whole world to be straightened up. But they know they don't have the power, so they say, think globally. Think about the whole globe, but act locally. So we want to be agents of change. Uh, we want to uh, be creative and innovative. Uh, I was watching two motion pictures I went and got uh, the other day. One of them is Michael Collins, one of the starters of the... In fact, y'all ought to go down to the video place. Get Michael Collins. It, it talks about the IRA. It's back in from 1916 up to about 1921 when they divided Northern Ireland into Northern and Southern Ireland. Michael Collins uh, was one of the uh, most active people in that. And it talk, talks about uh, uh, the IRA. In the early years, he had just got out of the joint and he was, his partners picked him up at the train station and the Irish constable was following him. And following him and his crew, he says, well, what are they doing? He said, they know everything about us. They know what we eat for breakfast. He said, well, then that's what we got to do first. We got to get rid of them because the British could not rule over Ireland if they didn't have Irish cooperating with them, right? Because they would tell the British, this is a smart guy, this is the leader, da 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 da, right? And so, to make a long story short, they decided to start knocking off snitches. In South Africa, you remember the necklace? Does anybody remember the necklace? The necklace was what? It was South Africans that cooperated with the Boers, the, the Europeans that used to whip our people. It's not just uh, 20 years ago. This, this not long, way back. Used to whip our people. Used to do all kind of tortures. Well, it was the Africans that gave the white man all the information. Because he don't know nothing about it. They all look like Negroes to me. So, when they would catch an informer, they would light a tire on fire and put it around the Negro. That's called a necklace. In other words, they would burn up the Negro. We're not into that. 